In this presentation, I will be examining the impact of game-based learning as a counter story to the dominant institutional, cultural, and social narratives that shape the school landscape today, an interruption to the curriculum as planned. I'll begin by telling a story. The girl in the corner. Tears streamed down her cheeks as she sat alone in the corner of a forgotten library, walls of shelving filled with literature, an out-of-date computer bank, an unoccupied desk, and six plain white laminated trapezoid tables formed the furniture of the neglected space. The sparsely populated room was occupied by one other student on a computer, and a librarian working absentmindedly. The solitary student continued to sob even when a boisterous group of students entered the space to share a period of role-playing game fantasy. The group sat at the nearest available table in an amiable camaraderie. As they unpacked the gaming board various dice and character sheets to play a part of their Dungeons & Dragons campaign, one student looked back to notice the girl softly sobbing. A concerned look spread over the faces around the group. Loneliness was a painful feeling they all understood too well. In that moment, the empathy was palpable. There was no pity. We moved as if we rehearsed uh, the act several times. Paul led, followed by Garrett, then Abigail, and finally I brought up the rear in our approach to the, her corner. None of us knew her from any class or prior interaction. We all knew the transformative power that gaming held as we invited her to join us. She dried her eyes and mimed her thankfulness. We were all marginalized to an extent. We were all labeled the outsiders. The exclusion was the singular worst aspect of school, but I found inclusion through exclusion. The school seemed to amplify our lived experiences in distinctive and bold contrasts. We were all uniquely a composite of a variety of factors that contributed to our individual lived experience and identity. Gender, cultural background, socioeconomic position, ability, age, physical appearance, personality, familial relations, interpersonal relationships, sexual orientation, religion, and academic performance can work individually and in combination to shape the meanings that are attached to students within and throughout their school experiences. Schools are not neutral places. Games, serious or otherwise, do not exist in isolation, and gameplay is linked to issues of identity, performance, and sense of self. The girl, Sarah, we later learned, came from several marginalized groups. In that moment, sharing an experience in a safe environment with someone who belonged with us was of paramount importance. She was fairly quiet that first interaction, but a smile crossed her lips as the jokes in the conversation began to unfold. Nearly every day over the next few months, during Spare's official game association time and after school, Sarah developed social connections with her trusted friends and confidence. Games have the potential to connect us to a greater narrative, to build our self-confidence, assist in constructing social connections, address real-world social issues, and engage our critical thinking skills. Playing games is engaging, a cathartic experience, and an opportunity to socially connect. This experience highlights the power and potential of game-based learning in interrupting the dominant narratives in school and society at large. Why games? Competition and depersonalization shape the lives of students in many ways inside and outside of school today. We as educators need to be the embodiment of the changes which are necessary in a progressively more equitable society. As Maxine Green notes, 1993, and if wonder whether the curricula we devise can be of the kind that awaken, awaken sufficiently to move persons to fight the plague. The plague, of course, refers to the metaphor created by Albert Camus, who wrote of it as referring to not merely a pestilence or the German occupation of Paris, abstract thinking, indifference, depersonalization. If pestilence in our time can be identified with exclusion and violation and the marginalization of certain human beings, I would hope to see more and more teachers willing to choose themselves as healers, if not saints. Experiential opportunities feel more productive. As McGonagall 2011 notes, we turn to games to help alleviate the frustrating sense that in our real work, we're often not making any progress or impact. The objective of game-based learning and gamification is for students to be more invested in themselves and their education, which will have a positive impact upon their social confidence and intrinsic motivation. Games offer challenging and productive work that provides an optimistic sense of our own capability and a satisfying frequency of rewards. Game-based learning, or GBL, is a branch of serious games. Games that encompass edutainment, 
but also extends to all aspects of education that utilize a variety of games, simulations, and role-playing to target predefined learning outcomes. It is the purposeful application of a pedagogical approach that transforms mere games into serious games. Games are productive, providing clear, actionable steps and a progression towards a goal. Play has a magical quality that transcends the real world. Play has a tendency to be beautiful. Play casts a spell over us. It is enchanting, captivating. It is invested with the noblest qualities we are capable of perceiving, perceiving in things, rhythm and harmony. My love of games. The fondest and most meaningful memories I possess are a direct result of playing games or are co-constructed alongside gaming. It was in high school that me and a group of outsiders coalesced into a cohesive social group under the tutelage of one teacher that cared enough to create a safe space for marginalized students. He took a special interest in gaming and shared that love with us in a safe and judgment-free atmosphere. The teacher in question built trusting, positive relationships that carry on to this day throughout an optimistic and solicitous disp disposition. Taking the extra step to devote time and resources to providing students a space they could call their own. His advocacy for the recognition of our space, funding for the association, and extracurricular time within the association never went unnoticed. The gaming association played a variety of competitive collaborative and cooperative tabletop digital and physical games more than just games the association taught me inner worth self-confidence social collaboration empathy critical thinking the power of intrinsic motivation and academic engagement and enabled me to construct a coherent sense of identity the game association is a place for ostracized students to find a place that is their own and achieve a sense of belonging and achievement through playing collaborative and competitive social games Previously, marginalized students construct a support base, gain massive amounts of confidence, and become knowledge holders and role models. The Gaming Association became a place to share learning and cultural experiences. Remembering my past experience, exclusion was a singular worst aspect of school, but I found inclusion through exclusion. Today, in my daily context, I have a diverse group of students from a range of backgrounds participating in our school's Gaming Association, helping each other inside and outside of school. Incorporating meaningful gamification and game-based learning into the curriculum has been my greatest success. Interrupting the curriculum is planned. Curriculum is planned incorporates statements of intent and interest and the language of activities, recommended resources, and statement of, of evaluation. IOKI advocates for an alternative approach which includes a responsible responding to students. What is needed in this notion of curriculum is humanity, a focus on the human side. The lived curriculum as enacted by individuals accommodates lived meetings, thereby legitimate, legitimating thoughtful, everyday narratives. Game-based learning upsets the dominant narratives of curriculum as planned. At the game table, the focus is between the people engaged in play. Through engaging curriculum as lived experience, an educator can recognize each student's individual interests and personalities, enabling their influence upon the implementation of curriculum and legitimizing the wisdom held in lived stories of people. Curriculum should be envisioned as a course of life. GBL can facilitate meaningful experiences provide a safe place for individuals to share experiences. A teacher should retain a high degree of agency within education as an agent of education responsible for curriculum making in which the educator responds to the needs and interests of students. These inhabited spaces create epistemological dilemmas that we understand narratively. Teachers need autonomy and agency to promote a responsive and critical pedagogy in which students can address issues of identities, power, morality, social responsibility, inequality and notions of the future. As uh, Clendenin and Connolly note, teachers and students live out a curriculum. Teachers should see themselves as knowledge holders and curriculum makers. Through a dialogical existence, the relationship of students and teachers becomes a co-constructed relationship where the teacher teaches and in turn the students also teach the teacher. They become re jointly responsible for a process in which all grow. We should learn together to better ascertain the needs and requirements for both the teacher and the student to fulfill. Johann Huizinga, in his seminal text, Homo Ludens, a study of play element in culture, offers an interpretation of Western civilization as play. Play is the basis of human culture and civilization. Huizinga notes that all peoples play and play remarkably alike, but their languages differ wildly in their conception of play. The idea of winning is predicated upon being superior to another. For Zinga, contest means play. The Western uh, competitive notions may run counter to the mentalities of non-Western participants or marginalized students.
I emphasize cooperative games, simulations, and role-playing games with no definite winner and loose rules in my classroom, game-based learning. Gaming experiences are reflections of real-world experiences. I have elected to minimize competitive games as a result of the negative feedback I have received from a number of Indigenous students in my courses. The preference seems to be openness in terms of games potential and cooperation over competition. Competitive settings negatively impact losing participants in self-perception, perpetuate inequality as a deserved state, produce harsh interpersonal perceptions, detrimentally impact motivation, and produce self-aggrandizement in winning participants. Games enable participants to experience a degree of escapism and offer an opportunity to explore potentials free of consequence. Cal Law notes, play is a creation of which the player is master. As student self-efficacy increases, so does their perseverance in difficult tasks and their ability to remain intrinsically motivated increases. Games have the ability to build participant confidence as there is an absence of real-world consequences of failure and progressive difficulty enables players to build progressive skills to complete more complex tasks. The apparent goal of game-based learning is to create intrinsically motivated learners whose behaviors are self-determined and are driven by their own volition rather than external forces. The position that I found myself in forced a great deal of introspection, self-reflection, and acknowledgement of privilege. I asked myself, what is my relationship to power? Am I directly impacted by the injustice and inequality of society? The answer shook me to my core. The benefits which were responsible for much of my identity were the result of a dominant power relationship and the oppression of another group. In tears, my resolve had steeled to diligently provide a counter to the dominant perspective, to argue for change and to become that change. On graduation day, one student let me know, the new teacher, I was responsible for success. And I let her know that she was responsible for mine. Clinton and Connolly note, classrooms are for the most part safe places, generally free from scrutiny, where teachers are free to live stories of practice. I possess the freedom to institute whatever programming deemed best to assist student learning. I have seen the daily toll of content heavy required courses taught in a traditionalist manner etched upon the faces of students. I have seen anxiety and worry build up into breakdowns, fits, and uncontrollable sobbing as a result of the unrealistically high expectations instilled by teachers, parents, peers, society, and internalized by them. Students should not burn out in high school. I vowed that I would not unduly contribute to the burden being carried by any student. To that end, game-based learning came into play, not just for academically disengaged students, but also for high-functioning academic students. Game-based learning provided an opportunity for catharsis and a new methodology for a different type of engagement. Why can learning not be synonymous with fun?